The struggle is real. It was like two sides of my brain were just fighting it out. So wanted junk food. I had that craving. It was going to happen. And I gotta tell you about this. This doesn't go away. It's just, it's an old habit, right? Like all my new healthy habits are new habits that I'm working on making stronger with consistency and practice, but it doesn't mean the old stuff goes away because it just doesn't. That's the reality of it. So last night I was working and all of a sudden I got an extreme craving for fast food. Like my brain was already panning out where I was going to go, what I was going to get. As soon as my son said that he was going to need a ride home from his basketball training, my mind went straight into overdrive. I knew that I was going to have fast food. That was just going to be it. And here I am working on my computer thinking, you don't want this. This is not what you want. But my other side of my brain had its mind of its own. It already knew what was going. You get the picture. On a way home from something, usually from LA was a big one for me because I used to sit in LA traffic a lot. Pick out a fast food restaurant. I knew where it would go. It would have to be a drive through. There was something about eating fast food alone in my car while driving in the dark. And somehow for me, it was like nobody else could see inside my windows. Well, duh, of course everyone can. But there was something very, there was a, it was very soothing for me, especially if I was under a lot of stress. There was something about setting up the food in my car, eating it, what it was, the crunch, the time that it passed. I don't know what it was, it just used to soothe me. So my brain started going back to that old way of thinking. It was already figuring it all out. I thought, I don't want this. I really, really don't want this. So I had to get to work. I had to really think about why I was having this craving. So let me tell you the tips on the things that I did. The first thing that I did is I had a real conversation with myself, like legitimately, it was like two halves of my brain was like talking to each other. So one was already like, I already knew what it was gonna do, total alpha, I'm gonna get this food, I know where I'm going, I know how I'm gonna do it, I know all of this. The other half's like, yo, whoa, wait, how much do you want this and what's it gonna do for you? How are you gonna feel after you have it? And I had to have a real, real conversation with me, with myself, asking myself, how was I gonna feel? It's gonna soothe me at first, but it's gonna feel really badly afterwards, and here it's gonna feel badly. My joints are gonna hurt, I wasn't gonna feel well, I was gonna feel sick, that it was going to open up this Pandora's box for me that would include lots of other things that, you know, now I've screwed it up, so what the hell, I might as well just go for it, right? Probably spiral out of control. It'd take me weeks to get back off of it, if not months. By making that one choice, if I didn't have an incredible self sense of self-awareness, which is something that I've really learned to do and help teach other people to do the same thing, I was already leaning towards, I don't really want this anymore. This is not going to feel good. So once I made that determination, I had this big belief that not only self-awareness, but self-forgiveness. But let me clarify, self-forgiveness isn't an open-ended permission to go in, well, I'm gonna go ahead and eat all this, stuff. I'm just gonna forgive myself, and so now I have the permission to go do it, because I forgive myself. It's in those moments that you have a slip, or something goes wrong, or an old habit creeps up. I forgive myself for those moments, and so that way I can pick back up and keep moving forward in my journey. And self-awareness and self-forgiveness is really key in this, in for my own journey and for others that I've taught this to. The other thing I use is a tool that works really well for me and it helps. Uh, my PCOS, insulin resistance, and all those things I dealt with, um, it really comes down on a cellular level for me. And so I'll drink a Shakeology. Even if I had one earlier in the day, I'll drink another one and I'll get it in my system. I don't wait too long. There's like a, a breaking point for me to figure out, you know what? Once I cross over this little boundary, there is no going back. So it's like when the craving is starting to kind of build, I'll down that Shakeology. And what that does is, what if it's a shift in my blood sugar or something like that? It's like at a cellular level. It fills me with that dense nutrition so I'm no longer craving the things that are overly processed, the sugars, et cetera, et cetera. And that Shakeology is a huge tool for me since day one, and it's how I used it. So when I start going through moments like this again, getting that Shakeology in my system to get nutritionally full plays an enormous role. However, my mind's still playing tricks on me. It's still got its trip. It still knows where it's going. It knows it's going to eat. It knows what it's going to taste like. It's going to feel like, you know, in the darkness, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got to go pick up my son from basketball. But if you wait 10 minutes, oftentimes that feeling for whatever it is that you're craving, whether it was a cigarette or junk food or whatever it is that you're dealing with, tends to go away. That's been the case for me when I use it with a Shakeology. Otherwise, it usually sends me... Uh, 
well, look, you guys, I kind of just like to do things the way I want to do things, and you're going to wait me, make me wait 10 minutes to go do it. I'm going to go do it twice and really, really enjoy it. So sometimes that works against me, and while the, support, while the research is there to support the waiting 10 minutes, that's kind of where my breaking point is with that and why I utilize the Shakeology to do that. But it did work. I drank my Shakeology within 10 to 20 minutes. I was feeling fine. Still that thing chirping in my head. So what I did was I went on my Facebook page at Coach Shulin and I started journaling about how I was jonesing and I went through this whole process of how it was going to make me feel, et cetera, et cetera, and I did it openly. Now you can do it on journal paper. I'm really lucky that I have an amazing tribe of women and men who follow me and who were amazingly supportive of what it was that I was going through and I journaled it in my particular case online. So I do share it. As, as I experience things, the good, the bad, the struggles, the successes, I put it all out there. The journaling also helped keep my hands busy because part of that eating the junk food is actual motion. Finally, I made it to my son's basketball training and I did it. And I made it there and I made it back and I did give in. But I could still feel the physical effects of the craving, which was now a headache. It was just this light, just bad enough, not quite like the debilitating migraines I used to have, but it was just enough to annoy the crap out of me that I knew that if I ate that junk food, guess what it would do? It would get rid of that headache. But I had to get past it because the second that I get past that headache, I knew that I was free, that I was going to be able to get through this without a problem. So being overly tired overly tired sends me over the top. I will overeat even healthy foods. I will become a carb monkey, junkie, whatever it is you want to call it. I'll shove everything in my mouth. It is like primal. So what I did was I got home and I looked at the bed. I'm really big. I'm laying in a bed that's freshly made. She's like, I open that sometimes a lot. I go, honey, do you make the bed yet? I make him make the bed at night because then all I need to do is just get into it. Yeah, a little spoil, but he'll do it. He's awesome. I'll get into the bed and then I'm not worried about, I don't have these other things that I have to do that will force me back into the kitchen to have those things that I know I shouldn't have or even overeat the good stuff. And so it allows me to get straight in bed because guess what? I'm just lazy enough to not get back out of bed. So if it's made, I will get in there and I will fall asleep. Those are the ways that I got over my cravings, you guys. I still deal with them on a regular basis. Hopefully those tips have worked for you. If you have any tips, I'd love to hear about them. Comment below. I will definitely comment back. And if you haven't subscribed, you need to go subscribe. And I'm pretty sure it's over in this direction now. I think I've learned now. Please subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more coming up. And I love your feedback, comment, questions. And I'm always happy to answer them.